color schemes on models is a really tricky thing. I mean, it doesn't seem tricky. You just pick the colors you like and you go to town. And it's not that big a deal if you're painting one model or even a small squad like a kill team. Even if the colors or processes you decide to go with are really intensive and difficult, it's just not that big a deal. It's not gonna take that long. However, when it comes to armies, it becomes a much more intimidating process because I'm gonna be painting dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of miniatures, all with the exact same paint recipe. I want that paint recipe to be perfect. Case in point, my Black Templar army. My Templars are perfection. Every process, every brushstroke has been honed to a perfect recipe that I can follow and thoroughly enjoy. Contrast paint, dry brushing, sponging stippling, decals, all of it comes together to make a painting process that I thoroughly enjoy and I love painting up every single Black Templar. And I should, because I've painted hundreds and hundreds of these guys. However, the way that I got to that amazing paint recipe is 10 years of painting. I love how they look now, but they didn't always look this good. And I'm starting a new army. I'm starting Tyranids of the High Fleet Behemoth. And I want these guys to be just as perfect and just as enjoyable to paint as my Black Templar. So I'm gonna be trying to condense that 10 years of painting experience down into one project, something I've never done before, reference models. Many, many years ago, I bought a little Tyranid army off of a buddy of mine, and they have sat in this baggie until now. It's a bunch of junky Hormigons and Termagons, and this will be the perfect way to test my color scheme. I know the colors, blue and red with accents of pink, neon green, and maybe a little magenta, because I can't help myself. And so I am going to do paint miniature after miniature after miniature, trying every tool in my toolbox until I have a recipe that not only will work, but that I am excited to paint over and over and over again. That's really the important part, how fun a color scheme is to paint, because it doesn't matter how good the models look. If I didn't like doing it, I'm not gonna do it. This baggie is a trip down memory lane. There are some Doom Tyranids, a bit ashen, but on some lovely lava bases, and my buddy's old High Fleet Leviathan scheme, which I think was done with wood stain, and my first ever try at my current High Fleet from eight years ago. This little termagant is actually a memento of a very old EOB video called Discussion, Our New Tyranid Army, and it's okay. I am not gonna be doing that much edge highlighting on this army because I don't like to edge highlight. So I'm gonna be trying a bunch of effects to see if I can get something very similar to that without actually having to sit here and outline every single thing. And this model has been washed with a black wash, and that's actually gonna be really important because red is one of those colors that's kinda magic. You can't really highlight it as much as other colors because it very quickly skews into orange or pink. You can get away with it a little bit and I'm gonna see how far I can get away with it, but it's gonna be really important to get that red all the way down to black. So this little model from eight years ago is going to be my first try. And now for the second try. I let my brain go fuzzy and my eyes go cross and I just did whatever felt right. Red Tyranids, white primer. Now Tyranids are a little like Necrons. They don't wear clothing, so I can do a lot more with washes and contrast paints. I took a red contrast paint and put it over the body. It looked okay, but it kind of looks like candy. There wasn't much contrast, so a black wash over top of that to try and get a little more definition. If I was in the middle of painting my Tyranid army right now, I'd be pretty bummed. Nothing is quite what I wanted, and it's taken a lot more steps to get something decent. Some specular highlights on the skin, dark, dark blue on the carapace, highlighting them with lots and lots of little lines. I'm calling it quits on the body. I put magenta over the claws and that I was digging. Second gaunt in the bag and I'm so glad I'm running this experiment because otherwise this gaunt would be my army. This is just my gut instincts of how to paint a Hormigant in High Fleet Behemoth. And it's not bad, it's decent, but it's way too red. All of the details in the arms and legs get lost inside of that red. Also, now that I'm looking at the carapace, I went with a dark blue base coat, and I wonder if I lighten that blue up just a little bit, if it'll look a little more striking on top of that red. I like the green tongue, I like the pink weapons, I just gotta come up with a little cleverer way of doing them. So now I am primed and ready for test number three. 
Now that I have a little experience under my belt, I can try and nudge the scheme in the right direction. As easy as possible, with maximum satisfaction. I started with the Black Prime this time, trying to get my colors darker, then a Zenithal. I tried a different speed paint red, much more watered down, to try and get more texture to show through. And then a dry brushing. This gaunt has a gun, so I can experiment on that with some bone and pink speed paints. After that, I tried a little bit of orange highlights on the body. He's very different from the last try, and at least there's that. On the carapace, I tried a little bit lighter, and I do like the behemoth a little bluer than blacker. But overall, this bug was not buttering my biscuits. Third try was a little bit of a disaster, but I learned a ton. I really like the bone and green gun. I don't know if the magenta is doing much for me, but maybe I can figure out how to use it in a little bit of a more clever way. The poppy red speed paint is pink, so that's not gonna be my speed paint of choice. And the Zenithal, I've always used Zenithal on like clothing or armor or humans, and it always looks really, really good. But on a animal, on a Tyranid, it looks pretty extreme. I don't know if I like it. I think I might be reverting back to just a white primer for the next one and trying out some other colors. Now I'm starting to get the hang of it. Back to a white primer to keep everything nice and bright. And I sprayed on red paint with a Zenithal from above. I want to nail this red flesh. That's my biggest worry about these bugs. I put red speed paint over top of this and it disappeared into the red base coat and pretty much disappeared the white Zenithal too. It's there, just way too subtle to make it worthwhile. Now red is a special color. You can't highlight with white because it makes pink. So orange, it's an option, although it will make the red more orangey instead of red. After all these layers, the skin was still not flimming my flam, so null oil over everything. I want those crispy Tyranid bits to shine through. Now it might seem a little crazy to paint model after model after model, not even for the purposes of gaming, but just to learn how to paint, because you can just paint your models and it'll be okay. But an army is a really big commitment, and I think back to my early days of Warhammer when I was starting my armies, and I would often be painting my guys and thinking, this isn't a hundred percent. I'm not a hundred percent happy with how this is turning out, but it's how I do it. So I'm just going to keep on rolling with it. And my armies for years worked like that. And I wasn't in love with them. But if I spend the afternoon now to really figure it out and get all of these experiences under my belt, when it comes time to actually painting my Tyranids, they will be absolutely perfect. Another trick I like is sponging on white to make a texture. This works well on bone, but the pistol was a little dark and this ended up being a really harsh texture. Although neon green on the fleshy parts of the gun looks pretty cool. Test number four is complete and it is way too pink. Man, red is one of those colors that is really, really hard to pull off. I'm not even sure what idea I have in my mind anymore, but too pink. On the carapace, I went a little lighter blue and I really kind of dig it. I think it brings a lot more attention to the details inside of the carapace. Typically behemoth carapace is jet black with little highlights of blue but I think I like a little bit more blue. I'm definitely gonna have to keep experimenting on number five. Number five, this white primer has given me the best results so far, but other than that, I'm not really sure. I put speed paint over the white primer and made a new discovery. This time I applied the white primer much thicker and got much more white. And so the speed paint that I originally liked the look of became much more pink. It's those darn undercoats that make a big difference. Although I would like to avoid it if possible, some brush on highlights of white could be doable in mass if I don't have to be too precise. I airbrushed an orange over these highlights in speed paint and it made a lovely saturated orange. Not at all what I'm looking for, but it happens. And I'm not sure how I feel about the blue next to the orange. I have been staring at blues and reds all day long, but I think I'm getting somewhere. I'm using every blue and red color I own, and if nothing else, I'm learning my paints, how they perform and how they mix. And that is valuable information. And you know what else is really valuable? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have a new STL terrain set every single month. This month, we have the Hive Colony, a full battlefield's worth of monstrous alien organisms perfect for complementing your Leviathan box Tyranids. Number five is an absolute slap in the face of ultra bright saturated color. And that is all thanks to the ink. And now I have finally moved past pink into bright, bright, bright orange territory. And there's some artwork of Behemoth out there that moves into orange and it does look really good, but I feel like it should be red. I feel like it should be red, but somehow even more saturated than red. There is something about this orange though. It is incredibly vibrant. And this guy amongst all of my other test models definitely stands out. It definitely draws the eye and I am very much liking the magenta talons. Don't think I'm there just yet, but I'm getting close. 
I sprayed the body with Games Workshop Corn Red and then Evil Sun Scarlet from above. Then a dusting of white. I want to be able to see the fleshy bits of the Tyranid, and it's really hard to see them if they're just bright mid-tone red. I mixed some red and black wash together to hopefully make the perfect solution, and this wash definitely was working a little better than the speed paints. The speed paint reds are very saturated, where this wash is very dark. It made all the bits stand out nicely, and although it is pink, the pink was bothering me a little bit less. I've been doing different combinations of blue armor, and the differences are pretty subtle. On the skin, I decided to try one last thing, one last effort to get rid of the pink, and that's brushing on some red ink. This definitely got rid of the pink, but I don't know if bright saturated red is my jam, even though it's the color of jam. Number six has been a departure from the Army Painter Speed Paint I've been trying to use, and I don't mind that. I think airbrushing on my base color is actually gonna be quite a bit quicker than using a brush to apply speed paint, and it turned out all right. I also tried inks for a top coat, and I got those bright saturated colors I'm looking for, and I think I'm getting awfully close. Now I'm gonna take all the best things I like about this and all the best things I like about my previous gaunts and try to make the perfect paint scheme. This gaunt is kind of fun. I remember he snapped off the base and I decided to fix him by making him leaping through the air and getting a little bit more of his belly exposed gave me an idea. The undercoats have been a huge influence on the finished projects. Maybe a blue belly under a red ink base coat will make the exact color I'm looking for. Only one way to find out. It worked like a charm. The blues turn into a very dark, dark red, and the top is just red. And it worked, and I'd be really tempted to use this recipe because I think it would look amazing on the more upright Tyranids, like the Hive Guard and the Warriors. But on the Gaunts, it's really dark, and the reds really only get to the mid-tone. It is red, but not as red as I wanted. I finished this sucker up with a darker carapace, and it was time to compare. Gaunt number seven, done, and the blue undercoat actually did a really nice job of darkening the red. I think I overdid it on this guy, but that is a wonderful trick to know. It's kind of like when you put pink under yellow and it turns into a dark brown. Blue under red also darkens it. Kind of in the purple spectrum, kind of in the brown spectrum. I guess it probably depends on which red you put on top of it. But I am liking it. I'm getting so close to having the skin that I want. The only thing is it's not highlighted as much as I want which kind of makes sense because I didn't do any highlighting. I kind of just let all the airbrushes and stuff try to do that for me. But I think I'm so close. I'm so close to the perfect gaunt. I think eighth time's the charm. Now I'm feeling like I know my stuff. For my Space Marines, I changed one thing of the recipe every year or two. With these Tyranids, each one is a brand new test and I'm learning tons. I went with the blue, but much more subtly, and a white dry brushing to make sure the blue didn't overdo it. Then a dry brushing a white instead of a Zenithal so the pink doesn't overpower the red. A wash to make all the recesses nice and dark, and some specular highlights to make the skin look shiny. I did this bone gun minus the magenta. I wanted it to work, I love magenta, but it's such a small space, the bone will do the job. And I brought the carapace colors down onto the pistol, and I think it adds something. And there it is. There it is. It is beautiful. It is perfect. Ah, that is a gaunt. I wouldn't change a single thing about it. If there were a hundred of those staring back at me, that would be pretty darn cool. Holy cow, I've been painting so much red and so much blue for so long, but man, I feel like I've got the hang of it. There's one thing left to do, and that is to figure out these bases. Now, I know I want to set my guys in the jungle, so green, but what color of green? I got out all my green paints and gave each one to a Gaunt. I don't want to worry about exactly what type of basing, just to get the overall main color. Blue green, warm green, pea colored green, goblin green, army green, collared greens, or just good old fashioned green. Red, blue, green is a color triad and should all work together to make a very striking color scheme. Eight Gaunts finished and you know what? I don't love any of them, but that's okay. According to Nick, the best one is four, and I definitely like that Gaunt's base. The Militia Green is a nice dark forest color, but for me and my nids, I think eight is my pick. Although, it's not about getting it absolutely correct. These are test models, and I do enjoy every single one of them. My favorite is number eight, and I'm definitely gonna be taking that scheme and maybe modifying it ever so slightly based on what Tyranid I happen to be painting that day. But really what I've built up over this project is experience. It took me 10 years to get good at my Black Templar, and I think it only took me one afternoon to get pretty darn good at High Fleet Behemoth. And after I painted all these suckers up, I actually went ahead and I painted that Tyranid army. And if you guys want to see that video, it is called Two Idiots $500 Five Days Warhammer 40k 10th Edition Challenge. So check that out if you want to keep this Tyranid goodness rolling. Thanks for watching.